Welcome! In this video, we will continue to practice with the gamma matrices, and in particular, what I will do now is show that the gamma matrices are actually a set of 4x4 four four linearly independent matrices. So I told you that during the lectures, but I didn't actually prove it. So now we will prove it. And we will also talk about uh, the inverse of the gamma matrices, which is going to be very important, and also show that the product of any two of them is again one of those 16 Dirac gamma matrices up to a factor of plus or minus 1 or i. Okay, so that is what we will do. So, in order for us to do that, let's actually begin just quickly uh, proving the statement that the product of two Dirac gamma matrices is another Dirac gamma matrix, but with this prefactor. So the way to do it is just, well, calculate it directly. So for example, you multiply the identity matrix times gamma mu or sigma or any of the others. And you see, of course, that you get another gamma matrix. It's immediate because it's the identity. It doesn't change it. And you get a factor of one. So that part is, of course, uh, trivial. And then you just have to multiply every single uh, combination. But of course, because of time and we're just going to do an example. So for example, if we want to multiply gamma 5, which we can take to be 0, the identity, identity 0. Sometimes I write the identity like this, sometimes like this. Uh, it's the same, don't worry. And then we can take this and we can also take the matrix sigma 0, 1, which is 0, i, sigma, this is an i, so i, sigma 1, i, sigma 1, 0, and we can mul multiply them together. So get gamma 5, sigma 0, sorry, 0, 1. So multiplying this, we get, let's see, so 0 times 1 times this, we get i, sigma 1. Then we have 0 here, 0 here, and i, sigma 1. So this, of course, is simply going to be i times and this sigma 1. And this is simply going to be sigma 2, 3. Okay, so that is what we get. So you can see that we get i times another um, Dirac gamma matrix. So there we go. And you can do this for every single one and you will always get some um, gamma matrix times some constant. So nothing there is too crazy. Now let's talk briefly about the inverse of the gamma matrices. That's going to be quite relevant. So if we have this set of gamma matrices gamma A, we are interested in finding some other set of gamma A with the A down here, such that if we multiply it with gamma A with the A up there, we get one, or rather the identity matrix, of course. When I say one, I mean the equivalent in a matrix. So the identity matrix, let's maybe write it like this. So that is what we want to do. So you can construct it. Now, the way I like to do this, of course, it depends on your representation, um, but I like to do it like this. So we have the identity first, so identity times the identity is going to give us the identity. And then when we multiply these other matrices, you will notice that we get a prefactor. So for example, if you multiply gamma mu, gamma mu, you don't just get one, as we saw in a previous video, we get four times the identity matrix. And if you don't know where this comes from, you should go back to my series on mastering the gamma matrices, because it's very important. You need to know uh, where that comes from, o or how to calculate it at least. So this is four times uh, the identity, so we need to multiply by a factor of one over four. So that's the best normalization for us to, to choose. And then we get sigma mu nu, comma, minus gamma five, gamma mu, comma, gamma five. So this is a, a set, for example, of gamma matrices, where if you multiply each one of them, you will see that you get uh, the identity matrix. So that is uh, one of the sets, but of course, we don't really need to always know the exact form. We can just use the properties that we know. So how do we prove now that this set is indeed linearly independent? Well, first of all, let's keep in mind that if the set is linearly independent, it means that we can take a sum of some constant, Ca, let's say, times each one of those. And this, in order for us to, for, in order for that to be zero, we need Ca to be zero, right? So th that is the whole point. If they are linearly independent, the only way for that to be zero is if the constant itself is zero. We want to just take the trace at some point because the trace often allows you to have things that will be zero. So because if you'd have the trace of the identity, then you get four. And if you have a trace of some gamma matrices, you're going to get zero, for example, as we have seen in, in, in another video. So the trace often allows you to simplify things. So what we will do is we will multiply from the left by 
uh, gamma b, so some other gamma, so, and gamma b like this, so the inverse of gamma b up there, so gamma b, gamma a equal to zero, and then we will take the trace of this. Now the trace of a sum is simply, uh, you, you can just put the trace inside, right, because if you have a trace of a plus b plus c, this is the, tra the same as the trace of a plus the trace of b plus the trace of c. So what this means is you simply take the trace of each individual element, but also we know that trace of, let's say, a, a times some matrix M is simply A times the trace of M. Well, in this case, of course, A here would have to be a matrix. This A is a constant, so, or some scalar, rather, some scalar. Okay, so using this, we can now write this in this following way. So the sum over A of CA times the trace of gamma B, gamma A has to be equal to zero. Now, what is the trace of gamma B, gamma A? Well, let's see, we have two cases. If B is equal to A, then we get, let me move downwards, we get trace of gamma B, gamma B, which is by definition the identity matrix. So we get trace of the identity matrix which we know is four. So now in the case where B is different from A, we get the trace of, well, uh, running it like we had before, gamma B, gamma A, but this is always going to be zero, right? We already showed that in my video on mastering the gamma matrices where the trace of the product of any two gamma matrices is always zero. So, well, for that reason, this is always going to be zero as long as A and B are different, of course, if they are the same, uh, it's what we have up there. And we proved every single uh, case separately in my video on mastering the gamma matrix, uh, which is actually on my playlist. So if you don't know where this came from, you really need to go watch that video because those properties are very important. Okay, so what this means is that if B is equal to A, we get four here. And if B is different, then, well, in that case, we, we, we don't get that four. <laughs> um, so what we get basically is sum over a equal to B, so actually the sum is very soon going to die. I'm going to keep it there for just a moment. And then instead of the trace, we get here four times, so times four times delta A, B. So this means that, well, the sum is going to now just go away. We get four times C, A equals zero. So what this means is that each one of our uh, terms, this C, A just has to be zero, right? The, the terms themselves have to be zero. The only one that is not zero, which is CA, is also zero now. So, well, the only way for the, for, uh, there is no way for us to combine all of our gamma matrices into being zero. We need the factors themselves to be zero, which is of course the very definition of being linearly independent. So there we go. We just proved that all 16 matrices are linearly independent, which is of course important because otherwise one of them would just be a linear combination of others, which would kind of make this thing a little bit pointless. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.